Hi students, this is our last video lecture for module four. And in this video lecture, I'm going to show you how you can use a tool called a pedigree to kind of predict the chances of, um, of a couple having a child with uh, certain disorders. So it's similar to Punnett squares um, is in that you're predicting if you can have a certain disorder run in a family. But in a pedigree, you're kind of looking at the family as a whole. And so sometimes you're trying to find patterns of inheritance. Um, and so we're going to work on those on your guided notes. You have some of those. So people that use pedigrees are often genetic counselors. So genetic counselors are kind of health professionals that couples may go to if they know that a disorder runs in their family and they're thinking of having a child and they wanna see what the likelihood is. Often genetic counselors also, uh, women who are of advanced maternal age and are, are pregnant or thinking of having being pregnant will go just to see because as you get older, your chances of having a child with certain problems goes up um, and these the genetic counselors will try to find genetic patterns in your family, and they'll also just advise you on different options that you have. Um, so they're really looking at inherited genetic diseases such as cystic fibrosis. We're going to talk a little bit, and we have about hemophilia, sickle cell anemia, even mental illness runs in families um, more and more, right? Before we didn't think of this as an inherited genetic disease, now we do, and cancer. Um, so uh, this is cut off here. So we're going to talk about a tool, which is a pedigree that kind of helps you understand how certain disorders run in families. All right. So pedigrees basically represent, like, it's almost like a family tree where a circle represents a circle represents the female, the square represents a male, a line between the two mean a union, not necessarily marriage, some union where these two individuals had an offspring. In pattern one, they had a girl. Here in pattern two, this female and male had a male. And so often in pedigrees, um, you will see a pattern and usually the people who have a filled in, here it's yellow, are the affected individuals. So whatever trait we're following, the ones who are filled in have that trait, okay? Generally, we're talking about a genetic disorder. Um, sometimes we don't know if it's dominant or recessive, but by looking at it, we can predict what it is if it's dominant or recessive. Um, we can see the pattern because dominant and recessive disorders follow different patterns. So to practice this, I'm going to ask you, which of these two patterns, pattern one or pattern two, is following a recessive trait? For example, cystic fibrosis is a recessive trait in which um, you get a lot of uh, mucus fluid in your lungs. You're more prone to bacterial infections it can, and actually cause a shortness of life. So which of these two patterns? So the first thing is that I told you that cystic fibrosis is a recessive trait. So we can say big C is the allele for normal, little c is the allele for cystic fibrosis. Remember, every person has two copies of a gene, so two letters here. We know that the people in yellow have cystic fibrosis, so we should fill those in first because we know that. And here, little c, little c would be the affected, the person with it. We know cystic fibrosis is recessive, so you, it's only little c, little c possible. Affected could be big C, little c, or big C, big c, right? We don't know. So now let's fill in what we know about these patterns and see which pattern follows a recessive trait. Okay, so we know this person is little c, little c. We know this person is little c, little c. Could they have a offspring, a boy, that's either big C, little c, or big C, big c, without cystic fibrosis? Well, the only allele that this woman and this man can pass on through their gametes to their offspring are the recessive cystic fibrosis allele, because that's all they have. So there's no 
way they could have a child without cystic fibrosis. So pattern one is definitely not following a recessive disorder. Let's look at, I mean, I'm sorry, I meant pattern two. Let's look at pattern one. We know that this girl, child, has cystic fibrosis, right? Well, the dad, her dad, did not have cystic fibrosis. So he had to have at least one normal big C allele. But he had a child with cystic fibrosis. That means he had to be a carrier or heterozygous for the cystic allele, cystic fibrosis allele, which he passed on to her daughter. The same thing for the mother. She doesn't have cystic fibrosis, but she had a child with it, which tells us she had to be um, heterozygous or a carrier, we could say. So we have found that pattern two is not for a recessive trait, but pattern one is, because for recessive traits, you can have two parents that don't have the recessive trait, but are carriers, and each pass down that recessive trait to their offspring. All right, let's look at another one. Now we're going to see a dominant disorder. So an example of a dominant disorder is Huntington's disease. So Huntington's disease is a dominant uh, genetic disorder that's actually lethal. Um, and the reason, <clears throat> right, if it's lethal and it's dominant, that means if you had one allele, you would have it. So how do people have this? passed down because if they have it and it's lethal, don't they just die? Why would they have a kid with it? Well, the thing with Huntington's, it's neurological and it doesn't show up until you're older, until you're like your mid, late 30s, and by then you could have already had a child. So which pattern would show a dominant disorder like cystic fibrosis? Well, now fill in what you know. So these, these people that have darkened have Huntington. So we know they have to have at least one big H, right? Because this is a dominant trait. We don't know their second allele yet, okay? So we know these two have Huntington, so they have at least one big H. We know this offspring has at least one big H. Well, if this tells us which pattern works and which one doesn't. If this offspring, this child, has Huntington's and she has one dominant, because it's a dominant disorder, allele, she had to have inherited that from one of her parents. But neither of her parents has Huntington's, so she couldn't have inherited that. So that tells you this pattern is incorrect, because this pattern is actually for the recessive pattern, right? So we're kind of trying to identify which patterns follow recessive traits versus dominant traits. So this doesn't work because this is what the parents are. So nope. How about pattern two? Could these two individuals that have Huntington's have a child without it? Yes. Because each, if that unknown second allele was recessive, normal, they could have each passed that down to their child. So pattern two follows a dominant trait. Last one I'm going to go over as an example, and then you can try the ones in your guided notes, is sickle cell anemia. So sickle cell anemia is a recessive disorder in which the hemoglobin in your blood is kind of misshapen, and that causes uh, a different shape of your red blood cells. We call them, this is actually the shape of a sickle. A sickle is that tool that people used to use to like cut hay. The Grim Reaper has a sickle. Um, and that's where the name comes from, the shape of the red blood cell in individuals that have this disorder, this disease. And the problem with this is that because red blood cells carry oxygen in their hemoglobin, once they're shaped like this, they can't carry as much oxygen. And so that causes a lot of problems in the organs. This also causes problems because the shape of the red blood cell now, when that sickle shape gets caught with other red blood cells in the blood vessels and causes a lot of pain and problem with circulation. All right, so um, it is also um, often many genetic disorders that are found in your genes um, are more prevalent in certain ethnic groups because they started off as a single mutation, which means an error when that DNA was replicating. And then that mutation was passed on to individuals 
And so it makes sense that if it started in one person, it probably stayed in that group. And that's why it's found in more ethnic groups, right? So um, sickle cell anemia is found more in the African-American populations. And here's a picture showing how these shaped red blood cells cause problems with circulations and blood clotting. So there's a lot of pain, cardiovascular problems, lung ulcer and infections because the blood isn't circulating to your limbs as it should. So sickle cell anemia, I'm telling you this, is a recessive disorder. So I would start filling in the code. Big S is normal, little s is sickle cell. All right, so fill in what you know first. Start with adding known genotypes. So what do you know for sure? Well, hopefully you realize now that the, okay, so these are, you can think of this row as the grandparents of this individual and the parents of these individuals, right? So this mom and dad had three children, one without sickle cell, a boy with sickle cell, and a girl without. Then this girl without sickle cell married another individual without and had one with. So start with the known genotypes. Both of these individuals have sickle cell. So they have to be little s, little s. Now, these parents had a child with sickle cell, but they don't have sickle cell. So we call them carriers. They're heterozygous. They carry the sickle cell trait. This individual had to also be a carrier because they had a child with sickle cell. So this daughter inherited one normal gene from one of the parents, we don't know which one, and one sickle cell from one of the parents, we don't know which ones. And this individual married someone and they had an offspring with sickle cell, so we know that their spouse was also a carrier, big S, little s. How about this girl? Do we know what she is? Well, we know she doesn't have sickle cell. That means she has at least one normal red blood cell gene, big S. But we don't know if she inherited a normal from each parent or a normal from one and a recessive from one. So the way we note that is big S unknown, which is just putting a line. All right, so go ahead and work on these and see if you're able to do them. Take care, everyone.